Hi everyone, I'm Anton Kreutz and I'm here to show you how I make my instruments and give you a tour of my shop and workshop. Now imagine we have a tree. This is the center of the tree. Here's the tree on the outside and this piece of wood comes right out of the tree like this, like a billet of wood. And you can see here is the violin drawn on that tree. The instrument is made out of two types of wood. Maple for the back, ribs, and scroll or head, and spruce for the top. So out of this block of wood, which is maple, we carve out the top with hand planes. And this is how it looks. And this is the outline. Then we finish carving it out, sanding and scraping. And this is now what's called the arch. On the inside, we carve out, and that's what's called the graduations. If you take a look, we have little circles where it's thicker in the middle and it gets within circles thinner, thinner, thinner. So imagine that's like a bell. It's thicker on top and thinner on the ends. So this is like a bell, but in the shape of a violin. Here's a spruce top. Here's the arch, the graduations on the inside, and of course we have the F holes where the sound comes up. The sides of the ribs are cut out, and they're thin, and they're cut out out of the same block of wood, but then they're bent into shape into these ribs that you see here. Now, on the corners we have what's called corner blocks, and on the top and bottom, we have upper block and lower block. And you can see these ribs are in a mold, and they're glued together. And you can see they're moving in there. And then once we take them out, we glue these ribs to the back plate. So you can see how the ribs are glued to the back plate. The head of the scroll, they're also carved out of, carved out of block of wood. And you can see how here's the block of wood, and the scroll is being carved right out of it. Here's a cello scroll. You can see how this is a block of wood and the scroll for the head is being carved right out of it. Here is a block of wood and you can see the finished scroll for the head. Now the pegs, they're made out of ebony and the fingerboard that goes on top of the, the wood. So here I have an instrument that we cut in half. Here's one side of it, here's the other. Now I want to say no instrument was hurt on purpose. All these instruments we have rented out and sometimes they get run over, sat on, and then we save them for science and show. So on one side we have a sound post that's fit in there. On the other side we have a bass bar. So what happens when an instrument is plucked or played is that the vibrations go through the strings into the bridge and the bridge goes back and forth. It pushes on one side, which is the base bar. The base bar pushes down, then pushes back up, and then the bridge goes to the other side. And then it pushes on the sound post, and the sound post pushes on the back, and the back goes up and down. So in essence, the sound post is driving the back like a trampoline. And in the process of the back moving up and down, it is sucking air in these F-holes and pushing it out. And that's why the string instrument has so much power, because all this air is coming out of these F-holes. Now, the same process that's used to make a violin is used to make a cello. Here's another instrument that was sat on, a run over, and of course we used it for science and show. Here's the other side of the cello. And you can see here's the sound post. It's fit in there. Also you can see it's thicker here and thinner here, and that's just like all the instruments. And once in a while we even have a bass that gets run over. So same thing. Violin, viola, cello, bass, they're made all the same way. The interesting part about a string instrument is that when it's made, here it is in bare wood, and here the varnish is on it. The instrument, when it's bare, really doesn't have a good sound. But once the varnish is put onto it, that's what makes it a great sound. And so the better the varnish, the better the sound. And that's why you have instruments that are millions of dollars because centuries ago, they used varnish that was really, really good and made the instruments sound good. And so we feel that we make the same type of varnish here 
that they were made centuries ago to make the instrument sound really great. So now that I've told you how instruments are made, let's go visit my workshop. Welcome to the workshop. Let me show you around. Here's all the wood that we use. We have wood for basses, cellos, violas, and violins. It has been drying here from 10 to 20 years. Here's some of the machines that we use. We have joiners, planers, belt sanders, band saws, and also Sanders. So here's a base plate and we're going to do the graduation on the inside. I showed you an example of the violin rib that we bent and formed into the violin. Here is a base rib and we have base forms and we bend the rib, like that. It comes out as a finished rib, and then you have the ribs and a finished base before it's marched. Remember I showed you a violin form with the ribs inside? Well, here's the base form with the ribs inside it. Here we hang up the instruments that are prepped and ready to varnish. I've shown you how we make an instrument, and now I'm going to show you how we varnish it. Here's our UV room, and this is where the varnish gets dried. Here's a base bridge and we're going to be fitting it on to this new base I just made. So we use a knife and we finished carving out the bridge so it fits to this top and to this base. Every bridge is fit uniquely to every instrument. So that's why if your bridge breaks or gets damaged in any way, you can bring it in and we can fit a new bridge to it. You've seen how we make instruments, how we varnish them, and I'm going to show you how they're set up. Julie's going to show you an instrument that she's working on right now. So this is what I've been working on today. It's uh, the smallest violin we have. As you can see, it doesn't come with any strings or a bridge on it. Uh, i got to put all that on. Even these little pegs need to be shaved down to the right length. And when I get done with it, it'll look like this. Here is a 450 series base that I did earlier this year. And so you can see how everything's been put together where we have the tailpiece at the right length, the after length is correct, the bridge sits on there perfectly flush, our adjusters are able to uh, be moved with relative ease and it's not super tight. The string spacing is nice and even and it just looks nice. Once it's all done and labeled and brought out here to the warehouse, we then move it into our shipping boxes over here where it goes across to wherever.
Thank you for taking the tour. Let us know if you have any questions.